What's going on, good people? Adrian Homeboy Holmes here to welcome you to the new season of Super Gamer Book Club. New season? Where's the old season, I hear you say? Well, you can find all the episodes of the old season from our original book club host, Zetch, on our Patreon. And you can also find the newest episodes of season two with host me, ding, (laughs) on Patreon as well. Me, Garrett, and a special guest every month choose a game and we go over it and talk about it in a shorter, more informal kind of setting. It's almost like we're just hanging out and telling them what we liked about the game, what we didn't like about the game, so on and so forth. So we decided this is too cool to sit behind Patreon for all of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the older episodes and put them out on this free podcast feed for you guys. And if you want to check out the new episodes of stuff that we're doing, you can go and subscribe to our Patreon for only a dollar and you get the brand new book club episodes when they come out. That's all I got for right now. I hope you enjoy the episode and I hope you come to see what we have on Patreon. Take it easy and enjoy the show. Welcome back, good people, to episode 20. That's right, 2-0 of Super Gamer Book Club. Can you believe we've been through 20 episodes? Man, over a year and a half. That's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Doing this. Crazy. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I have to start off with this is another, you know, little. It, it's a little one, but it's a milestone. So thank you, everybody who's been listening uh, to every episode or if this is your first one thank you for finally coming in and checking us out you got a big backlog behind you you can go and check out um but anyway to kind of move things along for for this month uh the game that we're covering is considered by many uh as far as games history an all-time classic and it is uh rockstar's grand theft auto vice city it is the sequel that is hot off the heels of the revolutionary Grand Theft Auto 3, uh, which introduced many people, many people who play games to the sandbox structure or the sandbox type of games, meaning that you can go anywhere on the map and complete je- objectives in your own time, pacing, order, whatever you'd like. Uh, so this one was developed by Rockstar Games originally for the PlayStation 2, and it released in 2002 takes place in uh, Vice City, Florida, uh, a.k.a. Miami. It's it's fictionalized Miami. It's, it's Miami. It's Miami. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you play as a uh, former crime Ferelli family, uh, I guess, what, hitman, I would say, Tommy Versetti. Uh, Tommy who's Versetti. Recently, <laughs> who's recently uh, played by Ray Liotta, by the way, uh, who is recently released from prison, uh, after doing a 15 year bid for the family, Tommy Versetti's uh, is recently released from prison, not <laughs> Ray Liotta. Well, no, it's not. Ray, Ray Liotta is dead. Uh, 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 Tommy is released from prison <laughs> after a 15 year bid and sent down to Vice City to start a new branch of the Ferrelli family crime business down there. Um, when he is ambushed during a drug deal and has all the Ferrelli's money that they gave to him stolen. And the game is about you getting the money back from who stole the money from you or for whoever. That's, that's another one. You have to find out who stole the money from you, get the money back and get it to the Ferrellis and also set up a criminal empire. So you meet a gang of characters along the way in a ton of different kinds of missions. And this all takes place in a living, breathing sandbox world that um, Garrett and I are going to talk about. So Garrett, I'll let you start off. Top level impressions. How you feeling about this? This is your first Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah, other than playing in the casino in uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, this is my first uh, Grand Theft Auto story. I guess you should say you could say. Um, top level thoughts. Oof. Um, this is definitely a PlayStation Two game from two thousand two. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I played on my Steam Deck, uh, mm-hmm. which has a very nice uh, emulation. Playing at 60 FPS, baby. <laughs> looked uh, looked real, uh, real clean. Um, those, those six polygons look buttery smooth. Absolutely gorgeous. We wouldn't want it any <laughs> other way. 
Um, <laughs> but, uh, boy, uh, tell the truth. I, I see, and I, as I've said, I've said similar things in previous episodes about old games. I can see and appreciate at the time just what this game did, you know, uh, or what the Grand Theft Auto games did there at the beginning. Cause like Grand Theft Auto three, uh, Vice City and Liberty City were kind of like big milestones in not only the Grand Theft Auto franchise, it was kind of, those are like the first three, like 3D games that came out because uh, they were 2D before that, but then also just in the gaming universe with like pushing open worlds and stuff like that. Right. Um, so I definitely can see and appreciate and be like, wow, okay. Like thinking back to other games that came out in 2002, we're talking like, okay, like Splinter Cell was around. Uh, right. Metroid Prime came out. Uh, the Medal of Honor games were killing it at that time. Um, I was trying to think of open, more open world games. Uh, Elder Scrolls Three: Morrowind was a thing. Dude, what which, a year 2002 was. Kingdom Hearts came out in 2002. What it's not a open world, freaking but like, year. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, that was a great game. I enjoyed that. Uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunter was another fun one. <laughs> like uh, Wind Waker came out that year. Man, O2 was stacked. <laughs> O2 is a lot of... A lot of killer games honestly burnout 2 no that oh, okay that's not the one i said got burnout what's burnout burnout Re- revenge what was, was that the third one that was the psp one i think wasn't it was it, was it the psp one i don't know either way i it feel was, like i played that on psp Bur- burnout was just a fun series in general oh but, yeah uh, <laughs> but uh spider-man 2002 video game came out yeah that was an incredible game but anyways i don't know I, I honestly like yeah looking back and thinking about all the games that came out this pushed a lot of boundaries and like really expanded the vision of like, oh, this is what you can do in a video game. Um, but you can also like because of that, it was the first of its kind. It also has a lot of just issues in my in my opinion. Like even though all those other games I mentioned weren't aren't necessarily like big, huge sandbox open world and stuff like that, like they just had such a tighter like character development and story and even graphics and stuff like that. Like Mm -hmm. Mario sunshine looked gorgeous, you know, Metroid fusion looked or not fusion. Well, fusion came out that year as well. Metroid prime. Those I was talking about, like looked incredible. Like all these games like looked really good and played really good at great stories and all this stuff where I felt like grand theft auto because they are pushing the boundaries in other areas, which were very important, but like it just took some of the focus off of those other things um i like think it had to best. be sacrificed right like exactly, exactly. if you wanted like, a living breathing miles long world populated with people and sounds and yeah. things like that something had to give and it was it's the like, graphical style you only have so many xp points you got a lot of where they go and right it's like all right we're gonna take a little here but we're gonna have like yeah like uh our world's gonna be a banger but it may not look good all the time yeah a hundred different uh uh ai you know uh uh, npcs running around the run around the world that you could possibly run into and like a bunch of different cars that are just like driving around like a full like you know like traffic Mm -hmm. cycle going on it's crazy like on a ps2 game so it was impressive but because of that i guess overall um i it was one of those where like, all right, I can appreciate it on the technical side, but on the like any sort of like execution, execution, like well, even more specifically, like the story and stuff like that, which as you, you know, and the listeners know, like I, that's what I appreciate most in a game. Like I care less about how it plays to an extent, like as long as it's not fighting me, like I, I can like most games as long as there's a fantastic story. Like that's what I love about a game. Cause like, this is my, I don't, I have fallen off the bandwagon with TV shows and movies. Like, to be honest, like I could care less, like the rest of my life, I'd be fine with no more TVs and movies. Like give me stories and games. And so when I get in here and I'm like, man, the characters are like, to me, caricatures, I was just like, they are both unforgettable and predictable at the same time. Like I knew exactly what I was getting into, which again, that was, that was the point. Like I not also, also playing it, my first grand theft auto. I'm like, this is the whole thing of grand theft auto every game is like these fun caricatures of things from other media essentially right and so like all right like so right off the bat i'm like all right like i just never felt like i didn't connect with any characters and then the story as a whole um it essentially was yeah this guy who's sent to do one thing and then in the process he's like oh i know i wasn't supposed to do this but 
I could take over the city and just run this empire. And like, mm -hmm. so it's like, I, I, and I, and I, I've talked about this before. What was it with the red dead game and stuff? Like, I'm not necessarily a fan of being the bad guy. Like that's not my thing. Like sometimes when, if I'm given a choice, in those games, there's like few video games where it's like, oh, be good or bad or whatever. Yeah. Um, I always set out like, I'm going to be a bad guy this time. It never ends that way. Like I get to the I end. I was going to say, I'm and then you have to do I'm your first bad thing. You're like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm still, <laughs> I'm like, dang it. Like I, in Fallout, I'm like, I'm going to be the bad guy this time. I'm going to shoot everyone up. I'm going to like steal everyone's stuff. No, can't do it. So no, meanwhile, you're picking daisies. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it, this was kind of, even though like this game, you don't have a choice. Like you're just a bad guy doing bad things. And so, so I think by the end I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like I just, because of that, I couldn't connect to the character or the story because, um, and not that you have to connect with every story, but I couldn't even, it was even hard for me to like step in those shoes. Cause that's, that's the whole thing with like experiencing these fun stories and like movies and TV shows and games is being able to be like, sit back and be like, Oh yeah. Like kind of almost, almost like uh, walk in their shoes for a little bit in those like little snippets of their life you see. And, mm -hmm. but, but like, it was just a both so over the top and B just like, like, Oh man, this dude's just a bad dude. who's a super selfish and, you know, he was a jerk to, uh, Vance and, um, like, you know, all this stuff. Like, so not only did he screw over his original boss, but his new partner who helped him get this empire, he screwed him over too. Like in the end, Tommy Versetti is a piece of trash. Like, honestly, like I could, I, <laughs> now hang on a minute now. Cause, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we can talk spoilers, but, uh, you know, Lance screwed him over too at the end. So, but, but because Tommy was being a jerk, like he's being an well, asshole, I mean, dude, <laughs> like fair, he wasn't fair, letting him fair, in. Fair, fair, fair. That's how, fair. that's how I was with, 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 uh, with Vance the whole time. I'm like, dude, like Tommy, why are you being a dick? Like, come on. Like he helped you like without Vance, you would not have what you have. But that's the thing about this game, right? Is it's basically a Scarface, mm. except except Tommy lives in the end and he wins. Right. Unlike Tony. So, <laughs> and that's what this game is. It's, it's Miami vice. It's, it's Scarface. It's all the, the big eighties, you know, big Coke dealer movie, yeah. Hollywood. Totally. Uh, kind totally. of made into a game. Um, kind of I'm not, not necessarily pushing back, but I, I think the big thing about also about this game is it's, Granted, there were games with voice acting before and they were, you know, uh, fully scripted and stuff like that. But I think this is one of the games that helped push the narrative of games being able to be cinematic forward. Because uh, if you look at. They did a great job with that, with like fe yeah. it feeling like a movie and being very cinematic and like the cutscenes and the voice acting and everything. They did, they did a great job with that for a 2002 yeah. PS2 game. I'm like, Absolutely. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the fact that they were able to do that. Uh, I think especially when you look at games now like like Grand Theft Auto, like five compared to, to Vice City is is almost night and day in the complexity. But they wouldn't have been able to get where they are without starting with, you know, even three, I think, had a lot of moments where it was you you, you have you'd seen cutscenes before. You've seen people have dialogue before, but not in this kind of fashion, I don't think, mm -hmm. at least not not to this to this level of it being done. Yeah. Um, one of the big things that I think also people love to talk about with this game, and I, you know, we had to touch on it, uh, was the soundtrack. I think this is one of the best soundtracks to a game of all time. It is. Yeah. It is so good from top to bottom. It's better than three, in my opinion. It's better than than San Andreas. Um, it, it, every, every station, whoever was in charge of picking the songs just knocked it out every time, every, yeah. any station you turn to, you can just listen to it from front to back and be like, you, you never think, Oh, I can skip this one. I can skip this one. Or you'll just change it to the next station and there'll be a hilarious talk show about, you know, <laughs> um, I don't know, Maurice Chavez talking about something <laughs> or or a psychic helpline or anything like that, you yeah, know, is wild stuff they came up with, but yeah, right. <laughs> or a political talk radio. It, it, it's any number of things, but that's one of the things. Also, as good as it is, it helps that that immersion in the world. Yes, you know, 
Um, makes it I feel remember, like, oh, this is a real world. This is like, right. It, it really for it's, it's, yeah, it's credible. Like how that can add so much to make it feel like a living, breathing world. Like we've already mentioned, like the fact that, yeah, when you flip through the radio stations and there is a, an extensive track list for each station and then, yeah, these talk shows interspersed in between it. And, and what's crazy is like when you get out of one car and get in another car, like it, it can, like it doesn't, it doesn't stop for you. It's playing in the background, like it's playing as if it's a real radio station. So like, right. I, it, it's not like it pauses and then picks up right exactly where you left off in the previous car. Like, no, it's like, Oh, oh shoot. I missed what he said. Dang it. Like I, cause I got out of the car and got back in another car. Just or like, like in that. real it's life. Like, just yeah. like in real life. Like, I don't know, like <laughs> everything from what, yeah, the content they chose to the actual, uh, how they implemented it into the game was yeah. Brilliant. But, uh, I think also even back then, I, I always thought that, the actual controls were one of the game's weaknesses, in my opinion. I I don't know if Rockstar thought that the default layout that they had was was what worked or what they could wh- what they were able to make happen with the game to make it feel decent to play because we didn't have modern control schemes, right? You didn't press the you didn't press l2 to, to aim in and then r2 to fire the trigger it was just kind of whatever you could find on the on the controller that makes sense yeah and uh granted they fixed that with the with the re-releases that was one of the one of the few things that did, they did actually fix now what version did you play on this time around i i played the original release on okay. ps2 okay yeah, that's that's I played a PS2 version that like emulated, emulated on my Steam Deck. So yeah, so we both played the. I was curious if you because you mentioned maybe because it went on sale literally when we announced we were doing this. The the definitive edition went on sale, and I almost bit and got it, but. But then you told me like, it runs terribly on Steam Deck. Yeah, so I'm like, it's nah, like it runs terrible. It. Runs terrible on PC. Runs terrible on the Steam Deck. I'm like, no, I I already have the PS2 version. I'll just stick with that. <laughs> yep, I was um, good. Yeah, that 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 was one of the most frustrating thing with the controls was like, uh, like once you figured out things to an extent, I was like, all right, this is fine. Like swapping weapons yeah, you get with R two and L two, but the the one thing that through my entire playthrough, I could not like get through my head, and it never made sense to me is looking around. You you can't. I kept trying to use my right stick to look around, mm-hmm. and it would. It, it just goes in the first person view. I like, I don't want to go in the first person view. I just want to move the camera around. And the only way to move the camera around is to face the direction you want to go with your left stick. And then you, what was it? The L1 button. Then it would turn the camera, whatever direction you were facing. Right. And so I was like, like so many times I'm like, I'm getting shot at. I can't see where I'm getting shot at. But in order to look where I'm getting shot at, I had to stop, turn around, hit the L1 button. And by the time I did that, like I was dead because I wasn't moving anymore. I wasn't dodging bullets. I'm like, why? Like, why can't I? <laughs> like, unless there's a button I didn't know about, but I was I, like, I can't, I want to look around and I can't like while I'm running, I have a I theory look that, behind me. <laughs> I have a theory that that's probably rock stars due to their, it, it's either due to two things, right? It's due to their inexperience with, with working a system in, in a 3d world. Like they're saying, like, you know, if you have to let the, if you let the camera swing around, then you have to put different kinds of collisions with it. And I don't know if yeah. the engine that they supported back then and, had the technology to do that. And they barely probably had well. enough. Right. It barely had enough to to make sure that Tommy doesn't run through a building or clip through a building. So <laughs> now you want Tommy and the camera as a separate entity. That might have been an extra load. Uh, and then, like you said, also the rendering, I think maybe. They only wanted you to face a certain time because Horizon Zero Dawn does that too, where it only renders what is in the frame for the player. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same thing here to kind of cut down on on the the load on the uh, on the console. I think it's 100 percent the same thing here because there was times where there's uh, one of the asset missions where like I picked up I, I bought the car garage and you have to find the cars around the city. Uh, you have to do that first list in order to like start making money. <coughs> and uh, it, I spent so many hours and hours and hours and hours trying to find like five cars, but it's because I would see it and 
or or even sometimes I, I thought I thought it was the right car. It didn't end up being the right car, but I would think I saw it. It, mm-hmm. dr- it was driving towards me. It passed me, so I would pull a U turn. And sometimes it'd be there, but there was a couple of times where I pulled a U turn real quick. It gone. was gone. I'm like, oh, the game totally like it rendered it coming at me, and as soon as it went by me, like the memory was the PS2 was just like doesn't Can't exist do anymore. It. Sorry, Does, doesn't gone. exist. And when I turn around, I'm like, wait, there's the motorcycle that passed me, but the the other car, the car I need is gone. Like, where'd it go? Right. It was like, no. Like so, that mission took so long because <laughs> I could not find the cars that they wanted me to find or they kept disappearing. I'm like, yeah, dang it. It was so frustrating. Right. So <laughs> I, I totally understand then if that that's probably the prevailing uh, hypothesis. I think that makes sense. And I, I mean, PS2, granted, you're working, you're not working with very much in terms of raw horsepower. I mean, for consoles right. you are, but for a, a game at that scale, I think you, you would need to make it run the way they probably envisioned it running. You would need way more than the PS2 could have provided. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. They're just making the best of, of the situation of the cards that they were dealt. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely one of the things that are a product of their time. And I think they're just a product of of Rockstar not really having a there there was no really like industry wide blueprint for how you know most games work like right today the average game x is jump you know uh square is punch or or circle is punch uh l2 is is aim down the site r2 is is shoot things like that that's yeah. kind of like at least the the root of every game now but it wasn't like that because because there was no games that did that yet so no no at this point like it was still the wild west with with most games like you could i mean yeah this is the year betroid prime came out which is a first person shooter but it didn't have your you know yeah dual, you had a, your, it didn't it didn't have your dual stick like movement setup, yeah, right it's like, that wasn't so, a thing yeah that was, was like, barely a thing because halo had just came out so nobody else had time to catch up. <laughs> right. Yeah. People like they were just Halo was just kind of bringing that, like <laughs> making that a thing. And then, uh, yeah, even like Medal of Honor is on, is on here. It came off the same year. I'm trying to remember. I played Frontline. I don't think that had the dual stick yet either. Or if it very did, few, it was, very yeah, few very games few. at that time. But um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's controls are a struggle for a little bit. But then again, it's one of those things like, OK, once you, I played it enough, like I figured it out. But yeah, the biggest thing was just looking around. I'm like, dang it. Or even just not having like a like there's so many weapons. I think that was the other frustrating thing. There's so many weapons you can have in your inventory. Mm-hmm. And so like having this L2 and R2, you're like, click, 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 click. Oh, shoot. Wait, go back. Click, click. OK, there it is. It's just like <laughs> I need this gun. There's no now. wheel. I need right. it right now. Like I wish I could just had like two favorites and then the rest were in a backpack like I don't need access to all of them at the same time. Just give me like my two main weapons. But instead it was like all the weapons all the time. And you got to click through all eight of them to find like mm-hmm. the one you're looking for. I'm like, why, why would you make me do this? Yeah. Uh, that, that line of thinking has to come with iterations. Right. And with yeah. time. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, you know, you, you understand why things like that are, are missing. Um, One of the things that when we were talking before the show or before we started recording was, you had mentioned that one of your, I guess, I don't know if it's a gripe. Uh, you can explain it if you like. Uh, the the missions you were saying seemed really short uh, in this game for you. Like you felt like you were just getting into getting into a, a mission that was just starting to get good and then it would cut off. Um, do you still see that as a negative or how you feel um, about that? So, I mean, as far as me just having not having enough time in my life to play video games in general, it's not a negative because you even said that. I think your rebuttal was like, well, you don't have time to play a long mission anyway. Right. Like, touche, touche. Um, but uh, I just and again, it's like, all right, it's the year's 2002. And like, what what more could I possibly expect from them? Uh, but. I I still feel like. Uh, yeah, I feel like some of the missions were still sh- from what I would like. Again, if this game came out now, which it didn't, so it's this is totally an unfair judgment. But right. my preference, if a, if I had more time to play games, <laughs> and b, <laughs> if if this was something that like happened to come out now, like 
yeah, that was one thing I kept running into, like going through missions was just like, um, and maybe I felt it more honestly, because I actually had more time to play this game recently because of the steam deck, making it easier. I can play this game anywhere now. Like I don't have to come down to my computer. It's not an event. I can just sit in my bed and play it. Uh, or I, I went, purchase. I, right. I went on a work trip this last weekend. Uh, I was out gone for five days in Nashville. And so like in the hotel room, I could just chill on the couch and play it for a long time you know like i had time to play this game for once which normally i don't have time to play book club games because i have a family and kids and job and all this stuff and and so i was like oh going on the work trip actually gave me more time to play video games at the end of the day right. um what i kept fall- running into let me you know i'll actually talk about the issue here now uh the yeah the the missions were very much like in and out and again like there's only so much bandwidth they're working with like power you know in this ps2 only so much space you know megabytes worth of space (laughs) well not only that Um, but i feel like design wise too right like yeah they were thinking outside of the box in a lot of aspects but i don't know if they necessarily were thinking okay we can make a we can make a mission to do this and then it can expand into this and then go all the way across town to do this you know like they do today but yeah, exactly. Like, and, and maybe that's, that's now that you mentioned that, that maybe that's more the issue is the missions did not feel fluid. It's not like one led into the next, led into the next. And it was very episodic, which goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of the episode, though. Like, this is meant to like mimic and almost like pay homage to those 80s, 80s like. Media. Media, yeah, movies and TV shows. Vice uh, or uh, Miami Vice, you mentioned, and stuff like like these TV shows uh, and movies that were popular at the time. And so, like maybe that's more it too. Is like uh, I even didn't when like, you start a mission, it does like the little title card before yeah. everything starts. As a little so. like the name of this mission, almost like it's an episode title. And mm-hmm. then like, but the mission it's it's very short, very bite sized. Like I think we were joking. It's like. I, I beat a mission in like five minutes and I was done. Right. Was I went crazy. down the street and shot a guy and that was it. Yeah. Like that's literally, and that's, and I think that's the other thing that blew my mind. Like when I was like, oh, they're going to send me on a mission. I don't know. There should be at least like four or five objectives or something to do. Some missions had four or five and then other mm-hmm. missions are like, go out there and yeah, like kill this guy. And I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> and like the mission, like I literally just ran on the street and like, the guy was on a motorcycle. I was like, ran into him. He fell off his motorcycle. I shot him and it's like mission complete. I'm like, that was like two minutes. Flat. Right. Like I'm like, I, for a while I'm like, am I, am I playing this game wrong? Am I speed running this game? Like, do I need to slow down? I'm like, no, no. Like, I, I did everything I could do. I don't know what else to do here. Um, like, and, and again, it's just like an abrupt, like end mission complete. And then you're back in like the overworld to do what you want. And then if you want another mission, you go back to the other thing. It's like, man, yeah, I wish either a, there was like, a couple of objectives in each mission to like give it a little more like uh meat and then I mean, the, and then the lack of flow like which you just kind of like made me think of yeah just a minute ago it's like oh yeah there's just a lack of flow between missions it was very segmented episodic kind of feeling mm-hmm. which um thinking about the source material what they're kind of basing it off of like i get it but from a gameplay perspective like it didn't feel good to me <laughs> i think i think we are looking at and I, I think a good analogy is like we're looking at a pond that used to be an ocean. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I think there's no like better way to kind of to to analogize that. I, I think that's a perfect analogy. Yeah. Like back in the day, that was the freaking Pacific Ocean. It was massive as huge. And right. then it's one of it's like those YouTube videos where they like show the scale of things. And they mm-hmm. could keep zooming out and out and out and out. And by the time you're at 2023 here, it's like a little the, the thing the thing from 2002, like you can't yeah. even see it. It's like this, <laughs> it's smaller than a pixel on your monitor. You're like, mm, right. okay, all right. <laughs> like, so that's, you're spot on with that analogy. Like, that's exactly what's going on here. It's like, this game was <laughs> like the biggest thing. And now it's like, dude, I still remember the commercials for it when it came out. It were, they were, it was uh welcome to the jungle. Uh, with Guns N' Roses. Oh. Yeah, I'm dude. Trying to remember. I'm sure if I saw one, I'd remember it. But off the top of my head, yeah. I don't, don't remember I, that. I, about, I yeah. remember because, <laughs> yeah, it was it was Guns N' Roses. And then the end of it was like Tommy running with a with an AR. And I, I think something was on fire. And there was a chopper <laughs> overhead. 
and then it was it was the end of the song it was like it's gonna take you down and then at the end with that hood it would cut to the logo and i was like dude this game looks like it rules so hard that's awesome and back so then yeah. it did granted i wasn't supposed to be playing it but you know <laughs> who, who, yeah that's, who hasn't that, yeah right who hasn't <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that, that was my deal. I never, that's why I never played these until now. Cause as a kid, like I wasn't allowed to touch these games. Like what? You just, just had to wait till you were 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> these the whole game. And, and, and it's funny because now I'm playing, I'm like, yeah, I don't really like them because it, like, that's why my, my, my parents didn't want me to play it because they're like, Oh, it's just like about like being a bad guy. That's literally the thing is like the quote unquote protagonist of the game, the main character is is a bad guy or whatever. And now playing mm-hmm. as an adult, it's like funny, like I don't have any problem with it. Like don't sit like don't take this as if I'm like, oh, this is so horrible. Like this needs to be taken no, off the I market don't. immediately. But it's like very much like a, oh, like is this interesting? Like I I really <laughs> like I already mentioned before, but like, yeah, that's an aspect I don't really enjoy because it's just like, <laughs> all right, you're you're the bad guy. Um, <laughs> to keep but, it in in the Grand Theft Auto verse, I honestly think you would really enjoy uh five. I think you like stories with with flawed characters, but you understand where they're coming from. And I think yes. five yeah, I think five has a lot of that. And I think at some okay. point you should go and 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 visit that story. Um, because I think I, that's really well done. Yeah, that 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 and that is a like I, that's a thing. I'm not like I think. Yeah, you're right. That kind of like clarif- Tommy. Tommy that, is like an out and out thug. Yeah, he right. doesn't have a care for anyone. Like, and he's a flawed character, but he's also just evil. Like, he's just right. bad. Where, uh, like, yeah, you're 100 percent right. Like, I'm not against bad people, but it's when it's like, yeah, it's more like, oh, some people like, are doing bad things for no reason. And I think the difference again is this is a 2002 ver- game versus Grand Theft Auto Five is 2013, something like that. 2012, Somewhere 2013. around there, yeah. <laughs> like, even in 2012, 2013, like it, narrative, it, there was much more nuance in narrative, and so it goes from being like, "Hey, I'm just a thug who's just gonna f people up," to like sometimes you just gotta do bad things to get by and like yep. it's that nuance and that those like that those tough to say like they don't maybe they don't necessarily want to do these things or maybe they do but there's still like there's something more, about there's it. more game to tell the story of the inner right. struggle and so like yeah 100 percent. like i'd be totally down to play five to if it, because i'm sure it has a much better story than this game oh yeah dude because it oh, has it has more five space. story is phenomenal it has more space to do that it has more room to do that where this was like we just got to get in and out because we don't have a lot of space here right <laughs> yeah um i i think i'm right there with you i i don't mind the length of the missions in in vice city uh because it fits my play style these days like we were saying we you know we unfortunately don't have all the time in the world to sit down and and play a game in the morning and play it all the way until night, you know? So it's nice to be able to get in and felt like you've, you've made a little bit of progress clearing a couple missions here and there. This is actually a really good handheld game. Yeah. It, I, I, all three of these, I think are really happy. Like had a really good time playing on my steam deck. Honestly, like it felt really good on the steam deck. And it, it honestly, it makes sense why they did the two on PSP. Now, now that I'm thinking about it in this light, because it's the same thing. You can you can take it out, take out your PSP, play a couple um, a couple of of missions, and then turn it back off and keep, and go about your day. Uh, speaking yeah. of which, uh, one of the games that was on PSP, I don't know if you had a chance to read it up. Um, Vice City Stories is a prequel to Vice City, and uh, okay. it's about uh, uh, Lance's brother that died and how he ended up hooking up with. Uh, with uh diaz so if you're okay. ever interested to see how that played out it's there uh, yeah and i know you I, have a psp yeah 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 i i didn't know anything about it until um yeah this last just this last week i played the whole you guys all listen will be proud of me i played through this game without a walkthrough because in the past i've been told like that that Give ruined your experience um because I and you know I, and the reason I usually use it is because I'm just trying to get through it quick. Like all right, mm-hmm. just like show me the way here. Like whenever I run up against a wall. But um, until this last week, I had a couple issues. Like we're trying to find those dang cars for the garage. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and 
when I was searching for the walkthrough, like I saw that pop up, Grand Theft Auto or the Vice City stories. And I'm like, oh, what is this? Like at first I thought it was just another version of the same thing. I didn't realize in, yeah, it wasn't until later I realized like, oh, this is a separate game on, on mm-hmm. PSP and stuff like that. So um, yeah, maybe at some point I'll need to, yeah. need to check it's, it out. It's definitely, uh, you know, a, a downsized version of it to fit on PSP. Soundtrack is just as good though. Hmm. Um, so the game good. takes place, I think, two years earlier okay so 84 instead of 86 but soundtrack still kicks i don't know if they got the same team to come back and do it um but it's definitely one i would i would recommend you you checking out same deal you can pick it up and put it down short missions um this one actually has a phil collins performance in it oh really That's yeah awesome. like made specific yeah. specifically for the game or they just got yes. one of his songs no, they got him to come in and do like a five, six minute concert where he does what? a couple of songs at a club. <laughs> yeah, no, amazing. it's sick. It's sick. Oh, man. Uh, but I mean, that that was GTA on top of the world already. So they could, you know, get those kind of pulls and, and celebrities to come <laughs> in and do stuff like that. It's fantastic. Um, I I think that we have sold our case on this game. Uh, did you have any any closing thoughts on this one? Did, did let me let me put it like this. Now that you have seen the foundation of what a GTA game has to offer, and I had mentioned that you know five is is kind of like the extreme evolution of this. Can you see yourself maybe playing more games in the series after this? Not necessarily older ones, but maybe like four five uh, i think six is about to come out yeah you know um i could definitely see myself uh maybe dipping my toe into vice city stories like you mentioned just to at least like get the feel of it because um yeah again if it has a great soundtrack and i did enjoy this world of vice city Mm -hmm. i might like just like test the waters of that one for a little bit um as far as like jumping into a full game though like uh (laughs) If I was, the next one would probably be five or whatever a modern one is. So like if in the next six months or a year, like six yeah. happens to stumble out of somewhere, like it won't I'll, just play yeah, five. I, that's what I figure it probably won't, but you never know. Um, then, yeah, I, I think if I do touch another Grand Theft Auto, it's it's got to be it's going to be whatever the most whatever the newest one is, which right now is right. five. It'll probably be that. And if I enjoy that one, maybe I'll like, all right, I'll give four a chance and I'll work my way backwards. But mm-hmm. um, at this point, what this is, yeah, made me realize like and I've already to beat a dead horse, like this is an old game and it really shows its age and it was in some aspects really fun and interesting and in other ones just whew, it was rough it was like a lot of times it's like all right let's just uh get this get this done like i'm really annoyed by these stupid <laughs> controls with the guns like shooting stuff it, like sometimes the auto lock sometimes you got a manly aim and sometimes you know the camera's looking the way you need to look and other times it's not <laughs> it's like it's ugh. early 3d 3d game design in like the yeah. mo- the least offensive way that you could say yeah you could you couldn't call something like that yeah so so if on. i so if i was to touch grand theft auto the, the series again it would definitely be five and then again it would be one of those things where like i slowly just move backwards through the catalog like i'm not going to start with any older ones even if even because i've heard people say like oh this one's great this one and it's all these older ones and i'm like now that mm-hmm. I play this, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm a little gun shy now. I might need to go to like the <laughs> more recent ones. Go to the pinnacle and be like, oh, just be okay. Like, I okay. see this rules now. I now I appreciate yeah. you know what's going on. Yeah. Um. Because at this point, I'm still not sold on the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Like I can, like I've said before, I can see and appreciate what this game did for Grand Theft Auto, the series, and for gaming in general. But this can, did not make me a fan of Grand Theft Auto. Like, I'm not like, heck, yeah, I'm going out and buying a freaking, uh, I'm not buying the, the, the art book in the in the walkthrough <laughs> guide of like of Grand Theft Auto. Uh, at this point, I'm just like, OK, I appreciate what it did and I'm fine. I'm fine yeah. never playing another one, but I am um, interested in a newer one. So. I, I would probably implore you then. I would say give five a shot. Um, I really think it'll it'll kind of like. I don't want to say like, oh, bring you into the light, but like really let you see what Rockstar's ability is as far as creating a story experience with it. 
Excuse I me mean, with a Grand Theft Auto game. I mean, I, I love Red Dead 1. I haven't played a ton of the second one, as as you all know from Super Gamer Boys. Um, mm-hmm. But I love the first one. So, like, I know they can do good stories. So that's like when I'm, yeah, I, I, right. I am interested I mean, at least I, I guess in, in just five. to say, like, in this context, right? Like, right. the Old West, Westerns are, are you can, you can make a really good story with that. But with modern day issues and modern day characters, it's pretty tough to to make you feel for somebody you know mm-hmm. so yeah yeah i would say definitely give five a shot but also uh for everybody who's listening i would say go back and, and you know give vice city a fair shake um just cruise around in a car and listen to the radio even if if nothing <laughs> else it's worth trying it just for that but i think honestly if you were to try that if you were to try vice city you would at least come away with an appreciation for the impact that it had as far as its openness and the illusion of a living, breathing world, I think at if you think about it in that time frame, it's it was second to none. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that will do it for for me. Um I I think we've 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 vice cityed all we can now. Let's go yeah. ahead and get out of here before. <laughs> before Tommy finds out that we're here without, yeah. <laughs> without checking paying our, in with him. paying our dues. <laughs> right. Um I'm I, I'm honestly surprised that I don't know. It, it, this I'm looking at the, the like the timer. I'm like, oh, I'm surprised we don't have more to say. Like this is a big game, but it's like we we've kind of already again beaten this dead horse. Like it's a big game, but at the same time, it's a very simple game. Like it's right. it, it is a it, it's it's a it's a huge sandbox open world, but it's still a very simple game that's going on here so it's like oh yeah it makes sense we don't need to talk a whole hour about this like there's right. like i don't I, I don't think we need to talk. hey do you remember that one mission where you know you had to fly a helicopter it's like <laughs> i don't think anybody's really listening for that specific yeah that our take on that specific mission but uh, was, yeah, there, was it, there a mission though was there was there one mi- like mission that you're like oh yeah that was actually kind of fun but like that this stood out to you like i and i and i only asked this question because I can't really think of one for me that was like, that was a blast. I want to do that again. Like I don't have that for me, but you, you played it back in the day. Is there a mission? Like just one that you, uh, that you look back on fondly, like, Oh yeah, that, like that was really funny or that was fun or that was, you know, a, a neat thing that they did with the gameplay or whatever. I'm I know a lot of think. people, I know a lot of people had gripes with like the remote control helicopter one. I didn't mind that. Oh, one. It, the, I, the, the, in in Vice City, it was really it was okay. okay. In San Andreas, it was terrible. It was bad. Okay, I don't know why they changed anything, but it was so much harder to pilot in San Andreas than Vice City. Oh, man. I, I um, barely made it in time on Vice City. Like I, it, I was like right down the wire. But it, it, I was like, oh, okay, first try, I did. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> I think my favorite ones are like stirring up trouble. So, for example, like when you when you have the Haitians and the Cubans. Oh, he's got to uh, start like start a you gotta game start, war between yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, I forget um, old boy's name, the Texas uh, land developer. Yeah, you know who oh, I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, my god, I think it starts with an A. Yeah, I'd be here all night trying to remember his name, but he always picks you up in the limo. Yes, yeah. At the he he has all the properties and stuff. Why well, can't right. really think of it? And he's the one that like Avery Carrington. Avery, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like trying to to drive down the cost of of property in that area. So he goes, hey, why don't you start a gang war with uh, the Haitians and the Cubans to make everybody want to sell uh, for pennies on the dollar? And he's not the only one that does that. I think there's a couple of other instances. But that one in particular, though, the 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 Haitians and the Cubans, isn't that the one where like you have to go and like shoot the guy, like you're shooting people up at a funeral, like they're having a yes, funeral or whatever. Their yeah. funeral, how disrespectful can you get? It's like, Oh, and my Tommy doesn't God. care in the slightest. And dude. you're chasing this hearse around and they're throwing <laughs> caskets out the back that are loaded with TNT. I'm like, what the heck is this game right now? This turned into like <laughs> crash team racing or something. Just like following this car, dropping TNT boxes out the back. Uh, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. That was the, uh uh like heaviest duty hearse i have ever seen in my life i was ramming oh, was that thing sturdy. i was shooting that thing and it would not bust like it took me so long to finally take that stupid hearse down but <laughs> oh man 
Yeah, yeah, straight up dis- disrespectful. Like Tommy doesn't give a crap at <laughs> all, dude. Like, he was trying to get funeral. Heck well, yeah. I mean, I understand because he's got to get that money back, or else they're gonna kill him. So <laughs> makes sense. Oh, uh, yeah. So if that sounded appealing to you, uh, pretty much <laughs> there is an entire game of that waiting for you in <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, so definitely go and check that one out. It's it's. I don't know if I would recommend the definitive edition. I would say unless you're playing it on maybe a PS5 or a Series X at this yeah. point. From everything I've heard, pretty much every platform it's on, it is still broken. Uh, right. I mean, I, like even on console, I've heard it's like still like buggy and broken and stuff like that. So um, unfortunately, if you can that's, track down. Yeah, if you can maybe, track down uh, one of the original copies or emulate it in some way, uh, the original PS2 version. I would definitely say go for that because that's the complete non-buggy, non-crashy version of the game. We better, we better stop talking about emula- emulation or Captain Holmes might show up here. <laughs> oh, no. He supports it. He supports it. I know. That's what I'm it. saying. Like, we keep talking about it. He might show up and start, like... Oh, no. He's he's gone. He's back out on the it. seas. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. he, he was just here to su- to celebrate eShop Day. And, <laughs> you know, it's come and gone. So. Uh, so, thank you, good listeners, for another episode in the can. Uh, episode 20 that's still a trip to get over um i can't believe we've been doing this for 20 episodes crazy uh garrett as always thank you for you know being here for pretty much all 20 of these uh and uh heck yeah yeah do you want to let good people on the internet know where they can find you uh well you can find me over on our main podcast that we do each and every week super gamer boys uh uh, you you can find it on all your favorite podcast apps or youtube.com slash super gamer boys where you're probably watching this episode as well in two months after it comes out which uh if you want to listen to it early and ad free you should support us at patreon.com slash super gamer boys to get it the month it comes out that way you don't have to wait two whole months to listen to this for free on youtube and podcast services what are you doing it's at one dollar one dollar this get audio gold. Free. so think about supporting us over there so then you can get this show early and ad free super gamer boys early and ad free um and there's other perks at some of the higher tiers as well um but uh you know what i'm excited for is to hear what next month's game might be <laughs> this one this next month's game is going to be a pretty fun one uh i think it's a little different i don't know if we've ever done anything like this on uh on book club but It'd be a nice change of pace. And that, of course, is the, I guess it was originally on Game Boy in Japan, but it came out here first on Nintendo DS. And that is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. The first in the long, long line of Ace Attorney games uh, that have been originally on Nintendo consoles developed by Capcom. So if you can find a copy of it, which you should be able to, because it is literally everywhere, even on phones. I expect to see you here next month, same time. And we will talk about all the good. And uh, spoiler alert, there's no bad. It's a good game. (laughs) It's a real good game. (laughs) So we're going to talk about how good it is next month. Sweet. I can't wait. That's a a good. I started playing a little bit on my 3DS when I first got it. I was like. I think it was the first game I fired up on there pretty much. Yeah, I got my 3DS and got everything all set up and jumped into some Ace Attorney because I, uh, before the eShop shut down, I bought the trilogy. So I got all three. Smart man. Uh, and uh, yeah, but yeah, it's playable and everything. I just looked up real quick on Wikipedia. So play, wait, wait this is a PSA. Play the game before you listen to these episodes. Yeah. Uh, you'll get, you can play on Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Windows, Wii, iOS, Android, Nintendo 3DS, Switch, PS4, Xbox One literally everywhere so you have no yep. excuses none no. and it's always on sale i think it's only like 20 bucks anyway yeah do yourself a favor that's three games because i think they sell it as a trilogy now so go ahead and play that and we will see you uh in a month from now and until then take care of yourselves and we will see you then all right later bye
And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed the episode. As a reminder, if you want to catch any of the new episodes the first Friday that they come out of every month, you can find them only on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash supergamerboys. And don't forget to check out our main episodes, too. Those are uh, pretty cool, if I say so myself. All right, we're out of here. Peace.